Hi everybody, this is Carl Leopson at the University of Arizona, your instructor for SERP 590. And this is a new video in the course. Um, it is a short presentation to help you understand the elements of research questions in single case research, when you might need two questions, when you might need kind of a different spin on your research question, but for the most part, we're going to go over the basic bits just so we can help you get your research questions set for this course so you can reflect on it throughout the rest of the semester. Let's start someplace that should look really familiar. Uh, this is Gardino and Fullerton 2010, which was the first article we looked at in this course. And the research question in Gardino and Fullerton is, does modifying the classroom environment with selected changes increase academic engagement in elementary age students with high levels of disruptive behavior. So let's look at what makes that a single case design research question. So there are there are four broad parts and you can read in your text and they'll offer you some variation on this and I think that's a good thing. You should hear more than one way for this to be explained. But my simple way of putting it is that a single case research question has an independent variable, it's directional, it has a dependent variable, which is a human behavior usually. We generally talk human behavior. And it has a participant description. Now let's look at where all those pieces fit in this Gardino and Fullerton question. It's just like a simple recipe. You throw these things together. You can see these things in, in what BCBAs do every day and in your practice. First, there is the independent variable. And in this case, it is modifying the classroom environment with teacher-selected changes. So the independent variable is the intervention. It's the conditions that the experimenter will alter during the experiment, right? So the experimenter in this case, Gardino and Fullerton, were going to take the existing classroom environment and modify it using teacher selected changes. It's that simple. Um, you guys probably in your work use interventions all the time. Those can be the subject as an independent variable in a single case research question. All right. And I want you to note too, as we look at these elements, how they help explain why single case research is so applicable in applied behavior analysis. Because it looks at interventions it looks at human behavior. It looks at multiple measurements. Let's give you another example. So in this Gardino and Fullerton question, they want to increase a human behavior. So all interventions, all single case research questions um, need to be directional and generally you're going to be increasing, decreasing, eliminating um, a human behavior. Okay. In these kinds of questions, we're not looking to inform, suggest, promote necessarily. Um, better off sticking with simple shown increase or decrease in a human behavior. In some instances, it may be appropriate to, to have an intervention that maintains a particular level. So the dependent variable is the behavior. It's measurable, observable. If uh, you have some background in applied behavior analysis, you should know all that, okay? Um, but I want to make sure you understand that in single case research, we're not looking for measurement at one point, right? 
So we're looking for measurement that we can do almost daily, right? So it's not something, a uh, one-time response, like a survey response or a test score, because that's not a human behavior, that's an outcome. Um, and it's not an individual one-time performance, like uh, a score on an exam at the end of a semester. So you wouldn't have a research question that says, does modifying the classroom environment with teacher-selected changes improve student grades? Um, grades are an outcome. They're not a human behavior, and you wouldn't be measuring them regularly necessarily. Uh, so we want to look at what you can do to increase the student grades, right? And likely that is going to be on tack behavior. Could you include one of these things like a, a survey or a test or an individual performance in your study design? Yes, you could use it like as a social validity that your intervention worked, right? A test score of higher grades ended up being the outcome of a student being more engaged in class as a result of the intervention. Um, more, a uh, higher percentage of free throws in a actual basketball game was the outcome because of the intervention where we focused on specific behavioral mechanics of free throw shooting, right? So let's look at, oops, we think we skipped over this last one. Participant description. Does modifying the classroom environment with teacher-selected changes increase academic engagement in elementary age students with high levels of disruptive behavior? So a research question, usually at the end of it, has the participant description. Um, it should be brief, but in it, Researchers usually try to include the characteristics that are factors in their selection of the, of the participants for that research study. So like in this case, it, it's a really important that they're elementary age students and it's important that they have high levels of disruptive behavior because, because the notion is that we can change disruptive behavior. One of the things about um, about single case research and the way that it's conducted overall is that as we look at more and more single case design studies in a single area, let's say in terms of modifying the classroom environment, we would pull up all of them we could and we would compare, start to compare the participant descriptions. And then in the end, we might say, gosh, nobody's ever done this with folks in a assisted living setting. So I want to do a study where I modify the workroom environment in an assisted living setting to see if it increases engagement. Okay. So that's one reason why as the field develops and as researchers do research in particular interventions, it's important to have really good participant descriptions because that's how the field within single case research moves forward. Right. Now, let's look at another study. This is one that you'll have the opportunity to read during the semester if you choose. And it was Fogel, Miltenberger, Graves, and Kohler, 2010. Um, and their research question does is, does exergaming increase physical activity in elementary age children? Okay. And you can see here I've color coded the independent variable, the direction, the dependent variable, and the participants. Okay. So the independent variable is exergaming. The direction for the behavior is increase. 
the dependent variable or human behavior is physical activity. And in their study, they would define that more carefully. And the participants are elementary age children. Simple, right? There are cases where you may need to enter to uh, mean not need to research questions. You may want to do a comparison uh, question, right? You may want to be comparing interventions. You may have um, two interventions that are designed to do the same thing to a human behavior or with your clients, and and you've had a hard time choosing between which intervention you should be using. Let's say to increase social interaction in your students. Um, so in this study by Fogel et al, they actually did a comparison. They compared exert gaming to the regular PE curriculum. And you can set your research question up like this, um, but if you're just comparing to the baseline conditions that the client is normally in, then you don't need to set up a comparison. If you are going to implement kind of two different interventions and the baseline conditions, then you might need a comparison question. I can work with you that on that in the discussion section, okay? In most cases, most of you won't do comparisons. Many of you, though, may need to research questions just for ethical reasons, right? So if you're a BCBA or you are steeped in applied behavior analysis, um, you understand the fair pair rule, which is you don't eliminate a problem behavior without introducing a replacement appropriate behavior. Okay, so, so I really don't want to see any research questions from you guys that just like this first one. Does training and the use of a communication board reduce screaming um, in a young child with autism? If you're gonna decrease a behavior or eliminate a behavior, you probably need to promote some other behavior. So in this case, you might have a corollary with, which is, does training in the use of a communication board increase the social interaction of a young child with autism. You don't just want to eliminate a behavior, you want to also show that you're increasing an appropriate behavior. Now in some cases you won't have to do that. Um, if you are focusing on on-task and off-task behavior, those are two things that, that they cannot exist simultaneously, right? Um, some behaviors can exist at the same time. Um, if you want to reduce call-outs in a classroom and you're doing that by helping a child learn to raise their hand, then you need to measure both of those. You want to measure that the call-outs are going down and the hand raising is going up because somebody could raise their hand and call out at the same time. So you want to distinguish between those. Um, if you're talking about on-task and off-task behavior again, or in-seat and out-of-seat behavior, those things can't exist simultaneously. So you could attack that with one research question in which you increase or decrease a behavior. So if you have any questions about that, you can ask about that in your discussion question, okay? So that's it. Um, I think uh, I'm, I think this is kind of the simple recipe here that your research question should have an independent variable, which is the intervention. It should be directional. It should have a dependent variable and it should have a brief participant description. So make sure you do the readings. They'll help give you more insights. Um, I look forward to reading your posts in the discussion section and we will get your research questions sorted out for the remainder of the semester. Okay, bye-bye.